By a show of hands, how many of you uh, have learned something so far? I inspired, I empowered. Okay, that's great. How many of you would love to be on the platform to share your story? Oh, it's under the so much. So, Melosio Sebenza. We have to go and work. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me in introducing our last speaker who's going to speak on building your personal brand. The gorgeous, gifted, go-getter, Puti Como. Como. Oh, askis. All right, so we need to give you a proper introduction. There's a way that we do it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, man. We must, people must know what you've done, what you're about. Like building Uban, no sis. When's in? It's in in jail, All right. She was born in uh, Pretoria, South Africa, and she began her journey, her career, winning beauty pageants titles from the age of six up until the age of 18. So, Linda Lisa Kazinle. Six until 18, 12 years. Logo Batrab. Wow. All right, uh, she is here with us amongst the multiple businesses that she has started. So it's not just the beauty, but it's also the building of the brand and building of businesses. Some of those businesses are um, logistics and construction. She's an actress and an entrepreneur who's currently embarking on a new project, Tsoha Mo Africa, Wake Up Africa, which focuses on black economic empowerment. She's in the building to share her journey and how to build your personal brand. Ladies and gentlemen, let's show some love. Please put your hands together to the one and only, the gorgeous and gifted, Puti. Thank you. Thank you so much. Jumelang, Jumelang. Tsoham, Africa, Tsoham. The time is now, Africans. Skatsi. Skatsakon. As we say, guys, Skatsakon. Sana Skatsoglala, guys. Asiko. It's COVID now. Imalia Funega. And that's why you all started businesses. Some of you have dreams. It's so weird, though. You know, Abelung will teach, teach their kids to go to work. Go to work, start something, right? Go, I mean, rather, go to school, start something, start a business. Tina, we get taught, go to school, go work. Isn't it? It's sad. It's painful. It hurts. In South Africa, South Africa, I'm not even talking about the rest of Africa. In South Africa, black people are 73% of this country. 73% of this country, right? But who are the people that are thriving in this country? Not the 73%. I shan't mention any names. Okay, so guys, we're ready for real talk, right? Mina, my, my kind of talk is not uh, technical. I, 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 I just speak, right? And you take whatever it is that you need to take from that. But it's going to be real. It's real talk. Um, have you guys eaten? Angazi. So, Lambilene. So, little Nkutwa Vele for 15 minutes because it, attention span your human being is 15 minutes before you zone out. Okay, Ntai Megarab after 15 minutes or because you won't hear me. All right, cool. If you are not ready to lose your friends, don't start a business. If you are not ready to have problems in your marriage or in your relationship or to deal with any of that, don't start a business. I'm telling you the truth. Do not do that to yourself. Because you will have wasted your time and your money. If when you wake up, and you go to whatever work that you're doing right now. Because with black people, we always have a side hustle, don't we? Like it's always, like our businesses are always a side hustle. Like Nyahamba, Nyasevin's a call center. But then, I'm like, eh, so if you want to call me on Instagram, you can see the love of my love, you can see the perfume, you can see the body spray. Guys, I'm selling wigs at the back of my car, like if anybody needs to. 
Like, you know, we always have the side hustle. But if you are not thinking about your business at least every hour, at least once an hour, if you're not thinking about your business, you're not meant to be doing that business. Because you're wasting your time. Leave it. Leave it. I'm telling you that right now. The, but if you do want to start a business, know that you won't be seeing your friends all the time. You will not be going to ama anniversary, ama tombstone unveiling uh, and putting those things first and seeing your children's children go to uh, their recital. You can't be that friend anymore. Because you know the cliche that everybody has that says, yeah, guys, I started my new baby. You know, I have this new baby. It's not a cliche. It is the truth. Starting a business is like literally having a baby. You've got sleepless nights. Aulali. Aulali because you're thinking about, damn, if funding. Yo, okay, today didn't go so well. So what's the next step? Yo, so you're not sleeping because your baby's waking you up the entire time. Your time, your efforts, every single thing that you spend, your number one priority is that baby. That's why you call it a baby, because it is your project. It is your business. That's the one thing that you have in your mind the entire time. And that's why they call it a baby. It is the truth. Right? All of you have businesses. That's the, that's the kind of dedication that you would need to give your business to help it succeed. If you do not have that, trust me, your business would not last. And you'll always be what Portia always said, a person who is always in need. In your business, you're always in need because you're not giving it the time that it deserves and you're not making sure you give it the proper funding and the proper things and, and aligning it to what you need to align it with because it's not your baby. That's, that's, that's the truth, honest truth. So I'll tell you something. So today I'm going to speak to business people and entrepreneurs that want to make it, want to succeed. Some of you already have started your businesses. Some of you haven't. Some of you are just people that want to start a business, but you don't know how. You don't know where to start. You don't know what to do. One, start. Just start. I love Nike, guys. Nike says just do it. Guys, whoever coined that, like in Nike Melim Patale forever. Like all brands need to pay that person forever because it is the most relatable slogan in every single thing in life. Just start. Because we sit here most of the time. Some of you are even coming to tea uh, uh, for the umpteenth time. And what you do is you sit here, you take notes every single day. I una my notebooks. I now. But you haven't even started. Because there's so much information out there. You're always on Instagram. You're always on Google. You're always on this checking and researching about your business, wanting to start something, but you never start. Why? Because you, you want things to be together before you start. Hey, Mundom Nyam, start. You want to start that business? You want to be a person that's selling bananas? Uh, uh, Take those bananas and sit out there and sell them. Everything else comes. Everything else becomes a lesson. Right? Whether you are learned, whether you come, you have your degree, whether Oprah, you know, they sat you down and they were mentoring you and telling you the different stages of starting a business, of doing whatever. Guys, is the way that you expect it to go. And don't think you're not going to fail because you had the best mentors in the world. Trust and believe you will fail. You will. You will. But that failure... Is how you learn. Okay. But then you don't just say, but then you carry on and you walk. If you have a pebble in your shoe, you put it back on and you walk. Don't, isn't that what we do in life? That's the same attitude that you take and you apply in your business. That's what you do. Guys, we all have different personalities. If you're sitting here and you want to start a business and you're sitting here and taking notes from Porsche, you're taking notes from Puti, you're taking notes from Bulelani, it's all different notes. But remember, the other thing that makes this thing work is you. You. In every single business, you have to have one thing. It's called a unique selling proposition. 
Unique selling proposition. What is your USP? What is the one thing that makes your business standing out? What stand out? What makes you unique? What makes your, your weight loss? I mean, there's so many weight loss things. Like, I was posting pictures on Instagram the other day, and people were telling me, and I was like, but I'm not fat. I don't believe that I'm fat. But someone was like, yeah, but less of stomach, you know? And they were giving me products to Tlasela Mafuta. Fine, I understand they're giving me herbal life. If you then come to me and you say, sister, I'm giving you my product right now. This is what I think can help you with, uh, to lose weight or to lose that stomach, that belly. I'll say, hi, man. There were people from Herbal Life. They were telling me so many things. And I've seen it everywhere. And everyone is using it. So I'm not sure about Wena. It's OK. I've already got something. Tell me what's different about you. What makes your product unique? Always find that unique, that USP. And most of the time, most of the time, when you create a brand, your USP is you. It's me. What I have to offer to my brand is so unique, nobody else can do it. If you were to take what it is that I'm dreaming about and say you're going to do it, good luck, Sisine. Good luck. Take it. Take it. But you will never do it the way I would do it. Because a yami. I dreamt about it. So if you're the person that goes around and piggybacks on other people's dreams, ah, sure, go ahead. But you will never deliver it in the manner that it's supposed to be delivered. Because I Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm talking about? Ask yourself this. What is the reason you wanted to go into business in the first place? A lot of people started businesses for different reasons. Some people started businesses because it was inherited. Ne? And then when you have tatama notes on somebody who inherited a business, you can't. You cannot relate to that. You understand? Some people, like, uh, Bill Gates is going to have a seminar, and we're all going to rush to that seminar because he's so successful. But he comes from a successful family. You can understand maybe what those professionals around him were able to do to keep that business sustained and keep it at the top. Yes, but not how he started that business because he didn't. Some people inherit businesses. Some people start businesses because they have to. Some people start businesses because they've seen a problem and they want to solve that problem. Do you understand? It's, it's, it's different for every individual. But you cannot take all of that information and think you're going to consolidate it and make it your own because you're going to scare yourself. You're always going to be procrastinating because you're going to be like, no, I'm going to be right. No, I'm going to be I'm going to be proper. No, I'm going to be I'm going to Start. Start. Because what happens once you've started is then you think about what's next. Okay, guys, I'm here. I'm selling bananas. Okay? Sure. But then, na what now? What's the next step? The next right step. That's the first thing. That's, I mean, those are the things that you need to think of when you do. You start, and then you think about the next right step. That's it. So if you've started, you're in uh, communications. You've started, you've started your company. Guys, I'm in communications. What now? Okay, I need to be known. I need to be known because I'm not having anybody knock on my door. So how do I make that happen? That's the next right step. Finding a way to make yourself known. That's the next right step. Because if you think of the bigger picture all at once, you will scare yourself. Some of you have got such big dreams. Your dreams are so huge that if you think about, about your dream holistically, it's going to scare you. You will freeze. You will freeze. When I think about my dream right now, Tsukamu Africa, what Tsukamu Africa is about and where it's going and what it could potentially be, I freeze every time because do you understand the magnitude of that business? It is huge. I'll tell you about it in a second. It is huge, massive. I would freeze. And then you know what happens when you freeze? Everybody starts getting in your head. You get so many people starting to tell you what your business should be doing, where your business should be going, what direction you should be taking. And then you lose your way because we are not low, low mega. And it sounds, they're really good and solid ideas. 
They're fantastic. I'm also, I'm eight years old, we'll upgrade. But our hambisani now, la wenu meluye corner. People don't know your pace. People don't know your personality. When, uh, you know, me, me, I work and I thrive under pressure. But I cannot uh, tell you to do that. I can't throw you in a, in, a, in a situation and say, get stuff. Put yourself in a situation. Me, nah, that's how I work. I get stuff. I get myself in a situation. And then I'm like, I've got to pay these people at the end of the month. So I can't fail. And then I do whatever it is that I need to do because I'm driven by that pressure. But not all of us are like that. Some of us are soft. You know, but it doesn't mean that if you're soft, you can't be a business person. You can. It doesn't mean that if you're soft, you can't be an entrepreneur. You can. Being an entrepreneur means that you are... Guys, you let me before you. Sorry. Being an entrepreneur means that you are in a space where you are thinking about things. Thinking about the future. Always. I'm going to say there's a difference. I don't know. There was someone who asked a question here. A very long question. Someone who was there. The last question. Yo. Ah. <laughs> and he was talking about uh, being self-employed and being an entrepreneur. And we all know that there's a difference between that. You're self-employed. Running a business doesn't mean that you're an entrepreneur. Because you could be a professional, a lawyer, a doctor. And then you're just choosing to be self-employed. You're not working under a company, but you work for yourself. So you're deciding the hours in which you're going to work, right? But you're a lawyer, you're a doctor, you've opened up your own practice, right? That includes you having to have a business, run that business, have employees, and then you know manage your employees, manage the business. Those are things. Then being an entrepreneur normally is you creating something. Being a creative, you create something. You create, I'm a, I'm a body sprays. I'm a perfumes. You're an entrepreneur. And then it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be a business person. Because some people create things, and they take them, and they give them to people. And those people run the business. Right? But especially Vela Elokshin. We have to become entrepreneurs and business people because I don't have the resources to employ somebody to run the business of what I have created. So I become the creator and the manager and I push the business and I make it work for myself. So I'm a creator, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur and a business person. So when I said you are going to be an entrepreneur, I'm speaking to entrepreneurs now. When you want to be an entrepreneur, that means you've always got to be thinking about the future. You can't be catering on the now. You've got to be catering for the future. What is your product? What does it serve? What is its place in the future? We are living in a time right now where times are moving so much faster. Uh, it, times are moving so much faster because technology is moving so much faster and helping everything else to evolve quicker. We are evolving quicker as human beings. Guys, you can even think about it. It was January now, now. We were on level five now, now. You understand? Now look at where we are. It's almost the end of the year. Time moves so much quicker and you think with your, in one year, you feel like you've, you've, you've done, isn't those like two years? Because you're living not only in life, but you're also living here. So you're living like, I'm a life's eye too, because you're living in the present and you're also living in this space. You're on social media, you're on, 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 online. So there's so many things that happen online. People are creating new products. If you're creating a product right now that's going to serve the purpose of now, as an entrepreneur, you've got to be fast paced. You've got to lean towards the future. As an entrepreneur, if you shun the future or if you lean away from the future, because as an, people are creating things all the time. And even if you do create something, you're creating something right now, but then it serves the purpose of now. But you need to know its place in the future as well. Because if you create it right now, somebody else, Lo Sisilo, is going to take that thing and make it relevant for the future if you don't already have that plan. And that's what people are doing. They are growing other people's brands and making them their own. So basically, they are taking from you and then modernizing it and making it relevant for the future. So when you create something right now, you need to be creating something that speaks to the now but has a place in the future. You need to think about that. 
That's entrepreneurship. That's what entrepreneurs are doing right now. Serve the purpose of the future because that's where the world is going. We are moving fast right now. Fast. People were thinking social media was just a space where we post our food. This is where I'm eating right now. I'm at the hang, uh, the hang, is it hangout? I'm at the hangout. This is what I'm eating. And then somebody said, okay. People are looking, Uguti Lomuntulo is posting, this is what I'm eating, I'm at the hangout. And she had 500 people see that. No, that's an audience. We can make money off of this because that's what television does. Television gives you entertainment and then while you're being entertained, they put money in front of you. They put something in front of you. So it's like infotainment really, right? So they put information or they put something or they put money while you're still logged on. And that's what Instagram and social medias are about. You're still being entertained, you're entertained or you are entertaining people and then bam, guvela advertia posha m quickly. Serving a need that you might have at that time. Oh my skin actually yeah. And then you click, you tang or you click and you follow. Someone thought, let's make money out of this. So people are creating spaces, people are creating things, and people are monetizing those things and making it relevant for the future, which is what I always say about entrepreneurship. Think about that and always put that in every single thing that you do or approach the future. Uh, uh, sorry. I want to think about, I want to talk quickly about something um, or oh, an example that someone gave me when I said, you know, my, my, my brands scare me or my big dreams scare me. It's huge where I want to be in life. It, it's really big where I want to be in life. And they gave me an example and they said, if you think about that, you're going to scare yourself. And that's why you always freeze when you think about the bigger dream. Think about it in steps. Like I said before, think about the right next step. If you see that the problem you're trying to solve is shoes, you're trying to create shoes, and your unique selling proposition is that you've seen that souls were to appella masinya. So the big thing would be to have a good soul, like have your kind of shoes, right? Beswabis are my spice girls. You know? Yeah, we used to call them spice girls. So you're thinking, have a lasting shoe. Uh, have a lasting soul. And that could be great for people who are always wearing shoes to go to school. Parents are spending so much money on, on school shoes, right? And their souls, I used to know that. Um, and I think Tafis did that because they changed their, their soul. Their soul was now plastic, which is which was really horrible because in winter, plastic is like, yo. Yabanda. In summer, plastic yashisa. But it served the purpose because I could have those shoes for longer. Right? So they solved that problem. And then, but if you now want to think about where you're taking this thing, it's not just the soul. Now the next thing is you want to make the shoe more beautiful. Or because you've tackled the soul, now think about the leather on the shoe. Now i leather i apela on top. So what do you need to create? Create something that can last as long as the soul that you've created. Now you're moving forward. Then you start looking. No, we're spending a lot of time. I want to be to. I was fasa ama 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 intambo ne. Yeah, ama laces. Now let's not make laces anymore. Let's make a zip. It's quick. Let's save time. Na bantu ana baya baya kuata because meleba washa ama shule iswa abo nan nan. So let's not do that. Let's make a zip or let's maybe even close it off completely. So it's one step at a time. And then in about five, six, ten years, fifteen years, you have done an entire shoe from just one problem that you wanted to solve and from the dream that you had. You have reached your dream and surpassed it by taking it one step at a time. I want to commend each and every one of you. There's just so much that needs to be said, but I know that we don't have a lot of time, so I'm not going to say much. But I want to commend each and every one of you for making the time and the effort to be here on a Saturday. That, to me, tells me how serious you are about the person you want to be. And 
where you want to be in life because it's not a lot of people, especially now when we know we have limited time to party on a Saturday to be here <laughs> listening to people telling you about your business on a Saturday. Like, I really do want to commend you. The things to having a solid business and running a solid business, I will tell you this. One, the traction that Portia told you. Every business needs to have traction. Every business needs to show some sort of paper trail or some sort of success trail for anybody to take attention or to pay attention to it. Yes, Gubhunganjani, and I know. Gubhunganjani, when someone is, is coming to you and you can see the passion in their eyes about the business or the idea that they have, and they're like, I need your help. I want to start this thing, so I'm still waiting for funding, but I need your help. I want to do this. And you have to say no to that person. It's very painful to me, for me to say no because I've been in that kind of position, but I learned. Nobody's going to give you attention if you haven't shown them the kind of commitment that you have had, the suffering that you've had to endure to make this business work. Because what you're then asking me as an investor or asking me as a person of business or mentorship is to say, help me start. I am not helping you start. I am not. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not helping you start. Because if I help you start, then I've helped you get everything. The starting is what shows me your dedication. The starting is what shows me that you have what it takes to get somewhere. You know what, what needs to happen. You've, you've felt ma joy on top of your shoulders. For me to be able to trust you with my money, for me to be able to trust you with my time. And trust me, I value my time more than I do my money. Because that is the biggest asset that I have, you guys, in life. In fact, all of you. Time. Time. Because nobody can give you that. Money is replaceable, but your time is not. Therefore, I choose who to give my time to. And you've got to be worthy of it. Think of it as Uguti Lusisuya's Borna. It doesn't matter. Your time is valuable. So remember that the next time you ask someone to help you out in your business. Remember that. Their time. You're asking them to give their most precious resource or asset that they have to you. Why? Why you? Why? Because when Zen when? Next thing, staffing. People who have businesses that's going to need staff. Hey, Mina, yes, I've just been cursed. Really. Because I have a passion for young people. I love young people, and I love to give young people opportunities because I know what it's like. You're out of school, you're driven, you want to get a job. And then, I mean, you've just studied. You're out of the township, you've studied. It's a big accomplishment for anybody from the township to have made it, have a qualification. Hi, uh, I'm looking for a job. Uh, do you have experience? From where? From where? That's why I'm knocking at your door. It's so painful. Because other people, I shan't mention who, pick up their phone. They already have their own businesses, so the kids can intern in their own businesses. And they pick up the phone. They call, uh, Van Riebeck, my child is coming to intern at your company. They've got those advantages. Do you understand? As in now. Lauma advantage, Tina, but we don't. So that's why when I start my businesses, in all of my businesses, I employ young people. I want to have them in there because I want them to have the experience. But the attitude of young people, the attitude, guys, young people don't want to work. Young people want to get out of school, have their first job, and buy their first car from their first job. JSO. Anyego a young person, Oti. I'm here, I'm here to offer my services. I need to do this. Um, um, I want to learn. Nyege, Uzomuzo, I want to learn. Yes, yes, I'm here to learn and I'm here to offer my services. I pass Madam Kumlade. Yes, Opasile Madam Kumlade, darling, but put it practical. Ibegela in the business, it's very different. 
it's very different. How many kids have got uh, ama, ama degree and are sitting at home right now? How many? How many? And what makes you different that I should give you the amount of money that you want me to pay you? How, what makes you different? What? I don't know. Angwazi. I don't know you. Show me who you are. Show me your worth. Show me your capabilities. Show me how invaluable you are. Then I can give you the amounts of money that you're talking about. Then I can make you, or rather give you the position that you say I need to give you. But you think I'm going to give you exorbitant amounts of money because your qualification says you passed number one at class in Lako, but ning about number one. But ning. The attitude, right? Staffing is important, guys. So don't go for the people who have the best qualifications. That's why institutions like churches will always rank number one in success rate, business-wise, success rate. Why? The people that work for them are people that are dedicated to the church, are people that have drunk the Kool-Aid, because they believe every single thing about that church. Do you understand what I mean? Because they believe in every fiber of their being for the thing that they're working for. So have the right people work for your business. Even if it means that you will reach your target or your goal two times as long or twice as long or three times as long as you've initially set for yourself. Have the right people work for your business. I work now with Suhamo Africa. I work with a lot of young people. And they are, they've got your attitude at bad. But I need them. If I had said, Ish, guys, I can't. I just have to have them. It doesn't matter. Suhamo Africa won't work. It will die in three months. It will die. Now, I've set a target of myself to reach in six months. But if I keep those young people working for me, the wrong staff working in your business, you will die. Your business will die. You need people who believe in your dream as much as you do. In your business. Right? And my phone keeps locking. We got a lock, guys. Um, uh, um, and um, the importance of, of making sure that every single thing that you do in your business or every single thing that you do to, to, to your companies speaks in the direction that you want to go. Your end goal. Your marketing must speak to your end goal. The people, the way that you present yourself must speak to your end goal. Every single thing that you do must speak to that. I'm not saying that think about the end goal all the time because you're going to scare yourself, as I've always, as I've said before. But think of your ed, end goal in the decisions that you're making for your company. So, that's your end goal. What you want your business to look like at the end, that's your end goal. How you want people to perceive your business, that is your end goal. When I'm always my decisions, as we say, business, I go to the next step. That next step must speak to the end goal. So as we say, I'm getting along. Right. So, God, I was telling me that my time, guys, and there were so many points that I need to. And okay, let me let me, let me wrap it up because I need to speak about Sohama Africa. Okay, cool. So, as I said. I love the fact that you guys are here. I love the fact that you guys want to start businesses. You want to own things. And I, I love that. And I want that to, sp to spread. Tell your kids about it. Because we as South Africans, especially black South Africans, need to be owning businesses that run this country. We cannot be 75 or 73% of this country and still be the suffering class in this country. That has to stop. Which is why I decided to start Soha Mo Africa. Because if you think about it, the budget speech is going to come. The president is going to do the State of the Nation address. And you know they're always saying things like, oh, the economy of South Africa has risen. It is great. But if you think about who is the economy? What is the economy? We are the economy. People in the townships are the economy. Why is pick and pay? Ask yourself this. Why is pick and pay, a brand that is doing so well in urban places, decided to come to the township? Why pick and pay for the township? Why check us 
if we township. Why? Because that's where the money is. And they have seen this and they have realized this. That this is where the money is. Forget Santon. Because these people are shopping online. They're shopping in Dubai. They're buying their groceries from wherever. Goopy goopy. Uh, you know, oh no, I only eat organic things. So they can afford to wait one month for their groceries to come through. Shipped from wherever. You understand? So forget that market. We want the market that is spending every single day. And who's that market? That is the people in the township. Every week. And they're capitalizing on that. But all of that is not owned by black people. All of it. That money goes, goes into that pick and pay that you save, that what, what, and then it leaves the township. Because so we're happy to be employed. So happy to be employed. Halala, Varaki said he sent me seven. See, whenever I'm not seven. No, you're always going to be working for people because the people that are making the real money are the people that have employed you. So, why don't you become that person? Why? That's what Zoham Africa is about. So, Zoham. Yes. The, it leaves the country too. The money that you take into pick and pay leaves into uh, uh, to wherever. Isuga Township Pini, Iago Fantonder, Fantonder is sitting at beach. Leo Maliangen. Their kids are not studying here. Their kids are not from here. They're not buying from proudly South African. They're not. When they have to pay, isn't the Bamelebas Batale, Bazisa, Imel Zabo Zahamba, they are Pumas, they are overseas. So the money leaves the country. And that's why we always have nothing, Tina. You might say it. And you might say, Zagini, Salariako. Ibuyelapi Salariako, Emma Veg. Because we are on survival mode. So, Tsukhamo Africa has decided to bring, take only 100,000 individuals from each township. We've launched in two townships. One is Tembisa, the other township is Soshanguve. Soshanguve is doing really well. So, We've launched, and what we're doing is we're taking 100,000 individuals and we're teaching you how to invest in yourself. Invest in yourself, right? Because you alone cannot go to a bank and ask a bank to give you a loan to open up a, a mall. They won't give you. Unless then for you to be able to, to get that loan. And if you are that person, come and see me after this. <laughs> I need to talk to you. You know, but um, uh, we're taking 100,000 individuals and we're saying together there is power in unity. We can make it if we're together, right? And it's difficult because black people don't like each other. We don't. We really don't like each other. And it's the truth. And I will tell you that for sure. You know, um, but and there'll always be these things that keep us apart because it favors I will not say who, when we are apart. When we're together, see 100,000, what we do is we take out 20 rands per month. 20 rands per month, all 100,000 of us. You can take out your calculators, anybody who has, or anybody who wants to check this. 20 times 100,000 people. So it's 20 times 100,000. And we're doing this only for six months. So times six. That gives you 12 million. So in six months, we will have raised 12 million from just 20 rands a month. See, 100,000. From that 12 million, we're going to build an essential store. Essential store, I'm talking things that people need every single day. So, Sizo 7, Sizo Builder, EU Save, or E Pick and Pay, or E a standalone one. Pick and pay, or a you save, or a or a, 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 a filling station, right? Because what you need, things that we need to, to live, petrol. No Muhammad it takes. You need the taxi to run. So you need petrol, or you need food. Those are the two most important things that you need. So what we're going to do is we're going to buy land. Buy land. Land ownership is important. When you buy land, then you build on that land. The people that are eligible to bid 
for building on that land are people who are from the 100,000 people that we have. So if you have a construction company, or if you have a signage company, or you have a security company, you are the only people that are eligible to build, I mean to bid for building, making that structure stand, right? Then who are the people that are going to work at that pick and pay? Who? The 100,000 people. So if you, you don't want to work there, your fam, but you've got a son, or you've got a brother, or you've got a cousin that needs work, that person will come, give us your membership number, and say that I'm a family member of member number 234444. We verify that, and that person is able to have a job. Because if you, our family, is working in our store, the store said, we want it to thrive. When we build in that six months, when we start building, we will be offering free business management courses to people who want to know how to manage businesses because you are eventually, you are going to be a business owner. You are a shareholder. 100,000 people, you are a shareholder of those businesses. Um, two, we're offering, uh, I'm a skills development and we're offering customer service because we don't want our business, Ugutifane, not all black run businesses like Ihoma Fez. Right? Where someone will say, Marta, Marta, I sure won't leave Ariana an idea. I get to give me a guy. No, that will not be happening at any of the Tsuhama Africa businesses. You need to offer the proper kind of service to your customers. Why do you think people run to white people all the time when we say, I want to shop as a business? I was a CRZ business. Black people, we know business. The problem is that attitude, customer service. When you say you're going to open at six, open at six. No. When you open at six, you open at six. When you say your business hours are these hours, people, it's customer relations. Then people start to trust your brand. And that's the reason why we're saying we're starting with brands that people know. We're starting with opening up a pick and pay. Because people trust the brand. They trust pick and pay, they trust the quality, they trust all of that. So that's the only way that we can make profits because people will come to a pick and pay because they trust pick and pay, right? The profits that come from that pick and pay, half, if that pick and pay makes 50 million a year, right? That 50 million, half we share amongst us, the other half we take and we build something else. So the next year, we're building a, a filling station and a U-save. So now we've got a pick and pay, a filling station, and a U-save. And the next year, the dividends from all three of those companies, same thing is going to happen. Half we share amongst us. The other half, we, we go and we build something else. So in about six, seven, eight years' time, we will be getting dividends from how many businesses around the township? A lot. We will own AMA businesses, essential businesses, essential stores, voila. If you own a pick and pay and you own a U-save and you own a shop right, ekasilako, do you think you're going to take your child to go ayotenga a shop right on as gutum niggas wala shop right in? You won't. You will not. That money that you're earning is gonna go into your company. Your company. And then is a wipa tale when a foot. So we are circulating the money within the township. Then the economy of the township, ya raisa. The value of the township, ya raisa. You understand? That's what we're trying to build. That's what we're trying to have. The main purpose of us starting Tsoha Mo Africa is to break black tax. Because if you're the only successful person in your family, ya fana. Leo male we on a we and I. Imele itokomele sesi, itokomele wana sesi, itokomele wana malume. Your, 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 your sister passed away and she left two children, you have to look after those children. So the hard work that you've done in making yourself successful, you still can't enjoy it. Because still. So Tsukhama Africa accepts people from the age of three months old all the way to 90, 80, whatever. It doesn't matter. As long as you're an existing human being. Do you understand? When I spoke about the bigger picture, and I said the bigger picture would scare me, do you understand that in about five years' time, the first, when we move to a different township now, we will not be saying, 
the first thing we're going to build people is a pick and pay? No. Now we'll be saying the first thing we're going to build, guys, we're building a, just for argument's sake, we're building a pick and buy. I'll say pick and buy just for, because I don't have a name. Pick and buy. That is ours. That is our franchise. Top quality, same quality as Abo Pick and Pay, Abo You Save, Abo all of those things. Do you understand what I'm saying? Then we take those things and we, when we move to the next township, they have to start with a pick and buy before they build other, other things as well, before they build a filling station, before they build something else. Then eventually it will filter into filling stations. You have your own filling station, your own name. I sell Shell, I sell BP, I sell E. So it's your own brand that's being developed by your own suppliers. People will be buying now the next thing when people are saying, no, we, not, we don't want to buy a pick and pay anymore. We want to buy a farm. You buy a farm. So your pick and buy is being supplied by your farm. So inyama ivela e faminienu is a supplier e pick and buy in. The brands that are inside there are brands from Abantuba Sekasi, obviously vetted and quality brands. Do you understand? I'm a veggie. I'm from organic. You understand? So, thing is, I'm a, I'm a body spray lawa. What's it called? Kifilwe. Oh, that's beautiful. Now, so, so, thing is, I'm a kifilwe. People are spraying kifilwe instead of spraying Revlon. You're Mazu Revlon when? You're Mazu Mrs. Revlon. No, I'm Mazu Minu Mrs. Revlon. But you're easy, Mali, I'm shem. You're not easy. But now, kifilwe, you're Mazu, now, la. Nangla, I can see Kifil. Do you understand what I'm saying? Ninga Sabi, I'm a black products, guys. Why is it so easy for you guys to go into Triple M, to go into Kipi? Nizliwi Mali, Ninga Sabi, Kuluma, Sianaz, Nyanbon. It's to go into Ama Hebel Life, to go into Ama Avon, to go into Ama Tapawe, Nizliwe Imali, and you don't even know this, but Crowd One. How many of you are in Crowd One? 1,800 to join. You are in his. You joined. But you don't know Mr. Crowd One. You must have missed the Crowd One. You don't. But he's is some Switzerland somewhere, Mr. Ndondoni. You don't. But here's an individual that you know. No, we'll see if they give you anything that's subpar to what they promised. You can even go and knock on their door and say, Yele. Because Lenta is savings. So you would rather lose your money on somebody that you don't know than lose your money on somebody that Omasi or Ongam Landa. Nogum Landa. Because Nizen, Nibonubuso Obuse, Obum Shop, and immediately that said trust. Trust your black brands. Trust them. Trust them. If you were open now, the same way that when they said there was a Woolworths that was opening, and you said, Ian, what is this? Okay, let me try it. You walked in because they advertised it, and it had a white face on it, and it was beautiful, and it was packaged beautifully. You walked in. The same attitude that you, went, that you did with that is the same attitude that you should have with the black products. You guys are selling black products yet you don't support black products. You have a black business. A black business. Your books are not going to... As soon as you start making money, your books are not going to be run by a black accountant. Trust. Our people can. Trust in our people. You know why I'm saying trust in our people? Because you're asking them to trust you. I won't trust you if you don't trust me. Then something wrong with you. Trust in our people. Okay? And I think I'm done. Yo. All right. Thank you so much. Puti, do we have questions? <laughs> All right, be, 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 because of time, this is why my job is so difficult, because of time. 
I've seen the hands. Some of them I've seen. We're going to take three questions. That, because also, we, we have to be out of the, the, the building. Um, I'm going to take five questions. I've seen one, two, three, four, five. Uh, six, seven. Oh, Monia, did you count me? Okay, I'm going to take this three, ne? Take three. Please, 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 please. No two minutes, three minutes. What, what? Please just, no, really, really, really. The people that need to go, we need to be out the building. It's been an amazing day. As for the week, let's get the slow slow. Right? Let's get straight to the point. I'm going to take the first three. Can we get the other mics, boo? Just three questions. Let's please get to the point. Yes, you do. We need, people need to hear you. People need to hear you because we're recording. We're online. So you need the mic. Right, so let's go, my mom. Hello, hello, Puti. I wanted to find out how do we join uh, your foundation? And can we trust you more without only just 20 and like go a bit more? Because we have already trusted somebody that is black, but due to compliance, yes. hence there's a lot of it. The bank, which I'm not going to mention, I think you saw. Yes. We trusted her, but because of compliance, she's black. She has a great idea, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping that she can. We also trust you, but consider the 20 rand. Anisha Kulman are my entrepreneurs. Maybe to be, maybe 500, maybe. <laughs> I'm not, I'm speaking for myself, <laughs> not Mina uh, Kumela Mina. Na lang bona. We are bona, like, yeah, yeah. 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 500 yeah. or, yeah, yeah. Along those lines, we are not Okay, thank you so much um, uh, for your interest in Tsoha Mo Africa. We are on www.tsohamoafrica.co.za um, and uh, on Instagram at Tsoha Mo Africa, on Facebook page at Tsoha Mo Africa. Okay, so the reason why we decided to do this as tw at 20 rands because we wanted it to be for everyone. And for kids as well. And also, like, and things like that. Do you know what I mean? So, you understand? As time goes on, you know, uh, maybe once, once we've done, you know, enough townships and we decide to do a Tsohamo Africa, something like Tsohamo Africa Elite, where we're now talking to business owners, uh, and then we say, guys, your investment will be this much. And you can be from any township. You don't have to be from one township. You can be from anywhere. Then we come together and we say, guys, then aren't saying Bukana. Then, then you know, we, we, we can develop places. The, these, I guess we're like the Afri Forum. Afri Forum did that. Afri Forum. Mahua. Akakani. And they built their own university now in Centurion. Kachaltabona. Their own money. They didn't ask anybody. They didn't ask anything. Government is called. No, they did it themselves because they understood the power of unity. So, um, you know, we'll eventually get to a place like that where we're able to build our own schools, hospitals, things like that that benefit our community. For now, Sifunuk Builder is in those those niggas are imad. God, once in a we can be Oprah and start building schools. You know, yeah. But um, thank you so much for that. But that can be something that we can do in the future. Look into in the future. Okay, I, um, I'm Dan. Um, actually, it's so funny. Um, Dan, we're not a robber because you ask. Questions. There wasn't about for somebody else the opportunity. Can you move this? Um. Actually, I I knew about your brand around 11 September. I was stuck in Ghana because of COVID. So somebody in Ghana sent me the link. I think no lie. I have it here. Um. You were you were you were speaking about uh, a young boy who sells water, but I did send your office an email. I didn't get any response because in my foundation, I can't like represent the same age group who want to invest small amount of money. Are you serious? Yes. Whoa, did you, 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 sent, you sent us an email on what? info? Info, yes. Info? Yeah. Okay, I also get, I, I, I need to check that and then just see me quickly before we go. Okay, I, 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 I need to check, there's no ways. At first, we, we were... We were a little, I'll be honest with you, at first we were overwhelmed because we didn't think that we were gonna get the response that we got in the beginning. Like it was overwhelming, the support of, 
of, of people. I didn't think Vesto Mover so fast. So, and I hadn't employed like a lot of people. So now I have, so there's no ways that they shouldn't have uh, replied to you, but I'll, I'll be able to be on that like ASAP. Thank you so much for bringing that to my attention. Thank you. Next person. So when this is Pussy. Hi. Hey, Kamalam Gupum Zile. I manufacture baby skincare ointments for my skin irritations. That's all I want to know. My question is on staffing. How do you? Because I have a problem. I hire individuals, and it can end. We are born with hair. Lava ngati bazo kikai brand, and then you end up having to let those people go. How do you then select? Um, Abandu, not really based on your qualification, but how do you see Ugutumundu? This one will then run with the vision of the company. And then, yeah, I'm also interested in the Tsukhamu Africa. Yay. Yeah, <laughs> Yes, but Tsukhamu Africa. All right. Um, you, you know, I'll tell you this as a, as, a, as a business person the signs are always there, but we always want to ignore them. The signs are always there. Mutoso fuga lady, Africa seventeen in Wako lady, we are born and then they're not even apologetic about it, you know? They'll just be like, I'm a taxi. I have a strike, so it's in a scene. I, I, when, when they're working from home, a person who's always giving excuses, who's always like, Kilo shading, men on Norkering. You know, but when you can see an individual who's like, uh, it's load shedding, but because we're Wi-Fi, so was a communicator now. That's a person to keep. That's a person to invest your time and your money in. Because we ask Guti, you, you always have got our programs where you invest and you give people, uh, you invest your, 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 your time teaching someone. That's an investment teaching someone. So you don't want to be going around to teach you two months down the line because young people like to job hop a lot. So you've got to be careful about that. See the signs. Their signs are always there. And, and don't, no matter how much you love a person, no? Some people, you can see this person has got a good heart, but they're not giving you the results that they need to give you. You need to let that person go. And remember this, when someone is causing a problem in your business, you do not move a problem. Because once you take a problem and you move a problem somewhere, that problem is going to cause problems where you've moved it. So the only way to let go of a problem is to get rid of it. You get rid of a problem. Umutumagai problem, we are born already, stand or some. Let them go. Put people on an, uh, a, a contract that makes them have a trial period for three months. Yeah. So they get a retainer, show ya bakbata le salari, engani for three months. So at that time, they're proving themselves to your company. And then after three months, you say, I'll give you employment, uh, annual employment. Uh, I'll give you a year's contract. Don't be quick to give people permanent employment, two years contract, things like that, because we as binder. Give them a year's contract. After the year, we review. If I'm a, you're not hitting the numbers or you're not doing, giving the company uh, any value, you let them go. Don't be afraid. I know it's the most difficult thing to do as an employer. Letting people go, it's difficult. But it's something that you need to do because your baby is number one. Think of it like, like Mutanako. If Umutok Seven Zelayo is not treating your child right, you won't even think twice about it. So I have a question for Mr. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Hi, Hi. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Dumelo. Uh, for myself, I would just like to, you know, applaud. You know, it's not a question as such. It's just to applaud because I think for us as a black people, I was reading a book uh, way back. Uh, speaks about uh, the, uh, the economy, rather. Uh, it's a spider web economy where people are actually, uh, it shows the Jews, it shows the Indians how they actually, uh, you know, come together and actually, you know, work together in, in building an economy that's sustainable for them as a race or as a people, you know. Mm. So what you were doing pretty much is something that's been way long time needed in Africa, not only in South Africa, but in Africa as a whole, because we need such as a black people. Yes, there's conditionings uh, psychologically, because yes. there are traps that have been put for us to be uh, disunified exactly. as a people, but mm. if there are initiati initiatives like this that can actually help people to, you know, have a different mindset, a different perspective as to say, because we have the capabilities, we have the abilities. It's just that thing, get the, you know, the, the, the teachings out of our heads, unlearn certain things that we've been yes. taught as a people that, you know, business, 
a gas to a lipid or on a lady, you know, business is business. We need to invest in our own things. So, mm. now nah, mine is not a question, it's just I love your idea and I'll Thank definitely you. be involved in whatever way, you know, just to be a part of that movement. It's a movement, it's a great movement. It very is. Much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi, this is pretty. Hi, darling. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that you are such a powerhouse, Aww. and I've been captured from the moment you started speaking. Um, uh, my name is Koke Tsomuremi, and I'm 19 years old. Um, I am a founder of Legacy Arts Africa, which is a performing arts academy, huh? and also a founder of a movement, a youth success movement called Catalyst for Bold Action, and Miss Teen Social Entrepreneur finalist. Um, so my question is, um, how do you keep yourself focused on your goals? Because like you said, um, your dreams can get quite scary and I related a lot. Because like as I'm sitting right now, like my dreams are just running and you just, yes. you know, striking a whole lot of questions. Yeah. Um, so, you know, um, often I get opportunities on a daily basis and I don't know um, how to turn turned them down, some of them, because I'm focusing on other things and I've been told that you can't be um, a jack of all trades mm. but master of nothing. Mm. So I just want to know, how do you, um, you know, maneuver through it all and just, you know, keep yourself focused on the goals? And how do you know um, which is the right time to actually take up a certain opportunity? Mm. Because, like, recently I actually got this other opportunity to come up with a um, social impact program for a radio station, but I couldn't know how to turn down that opportunity as much as I'm dealing with so much on the side. Mm. So I don't know if I should turn it down or I should continue. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, you're a beautiful young girl. Thank um, you. <laughs> um, I, I, uh, you know, one thing about me that I know it's not a lot of people that have this. One, I have such a strong support system. Like the guy sitting over here, he's always, we're going to get in the car right now. He's going to be on some, yeah, next time. You might also highlight in Tweso, or since we saw, and it was got the doubt, or got noted doubt, the whole island Tweso. You know, he's that guy. Like, look at the well, yeah, that guy. Um, uh, but I have a, a, a strong support structure around me. I'm very careful about the people that I have around me and the people that I share my dreams with. Um, the thing is, you can't share your dreams with everyone. Because um, as much as I have a lot of willpower, you know, it can take one person to just destroy my confidence at the time. And we are, we are different people, you know, human beings, uh, different personalities. Uh, if they go through half the things that I go through, but because Mina, I'm much stronger, I'd be able to take it. I'm in the entertainment industry. Don't think I don't know. You guys, you know, you type and say, I oh, yeah, be, ooh, ah, you know, you know, and some people, it makes them crumble, uh, you know, but me, I've learned from a very young age because I've been in the industry from a very young age, so I've learned to toughen up. So, but my support structure is very tough. Believe in who you are, believe in yourself. Yes, you cannot spread yourself too thin because otherwise you won't be able to be, be yourself and give whatever project you're doing the best of your ability. Having the ability to say no is one of the, the, the hardest things one has to learn. And I'm so glad and proud of you that you were able to do that because you see that you are busy with something right now. Opportunities will come. They will always come. Yes, there are those opportunities where people believe like it's an opportunity for a lifetime. Yo, guys, I cannot miss this. But remember, does it speak to your end goal? Is the opportunity that's coming right now going to divert you in the different... It's a great opportunity, right? But does it speak to your end goal of what you are doing right now? If it's there to assist you in getting to the next, the next step, then, yeah, by all means, take it. But if it doesn't, then unfortunately, that's how you de decipher whether you take that opportunity or not. Remember I said, with every single thing that you do, Sit down and think of the next right step. And if the re next right step speaks to that opportunity, then you can take it. But if it doesn't involve that, 
you cannot take it. You'll be going astray. That's how I, I get myself focused and bring myself together because everybody has got opinions on, on, on bettering yourself and bettering your business. Trust yourself. You know how to get there. Trust it. Trust it. You already know. Okay? Thank you so much. I'm also an aspiring media personality, by the way. I'd like to be an actress. So ah. I feel like ah. I could use some mentorship from you. And I'd like to join Tsukhamo Africa as well. Oh, my gosh. Please do. Please do. Um, you said you, jo you have an arts and what? Um, uh, Lagos, um, it's a performing arts academy. Performing arts academy. Yes. So you've got people who are learning to be actors, presenters, and, and things like that. From what age to what age? Um, from six years old. From six years old? Yeah. To Pre what? Um, to, you know, up, <laughs> up, any age. Look at the Tsukhamo yeah. Africa page right now mm -hmm. because Tsukhamo Africa is going to start a series. So we'll be looking for actors, we're looking for people who want internships for lighting, camera, sound. Mm -hmm. We're taking people for who are part of academies from AFDA, uh, from Pro Arte, Alphen Park, people who are in the arts, uh, who have got. For crew, we need people who are in the arts, right? right? But for actors, anybody who has the ability or the skill. So keep on looking because that, that post is going to come out really soon and your people can apply or come audition. Thank you so much. This Great. You're the body girl. <laughs> like. Um, hi, Pussy, how are you? Good, thank you. Uh, my name is Nokbonga, and I have a question in regards to what you were talking about. So I grew up, I was born in Alex, and part-time grew up in Alex, then my parents moved. So now, how do we infiltrate back into the township to come create opportunities there and help there? Because I think... Every time when you go back, they, they look at you like you're an outcast, like you're not even part of them, but yeah. you, that's where you were born, yeah. and you identify with the township as much as you didn't live your whole childhood there. Yeah. So how do you go back and infiltrate the township industry? I'll tell you now, this has been like one of my biggest challenges. I feel like it's, you know, it's been one of my biggest challenges I, I, you know, for the township. And this is also why I created it, Tsukhamo Africa. A lot of people, Mobuye Kasi, then they're like, oh, okay. Yeah, Utsini, I see us right, Shem. Because they feel like um, you, you're throwing, they like to throw pity parties. I know this with my friends and my family. Pity parties. Um, because if you make it feel like Uzela, Uguzobapegela, Pansi. It's your approach in every single thing that you do. Remember, people always project, right? So sometimes people's rejection of you is just something that they're, pro that, that they're projecting. It's the way that they feel most of the time, right? So they want to push something away before it can reject them. So remember, in every single place that you try and infiltrate, you cannot use the same approach for the different kind of clientele that you have. Learn how to speak to Abantu Basekas. You cannot come there and get long sack because they're going to be like, oh, you know, because you know the mentality already, right? So your approach must be different. Learn the ways to communicate with your target audience. That's, that's, that's number one, and that's key. Guys, because Abantu Basekas, most of the time, and I'll say this, people always feel like, it's not us, Christmas. So you're trying to help us in the township. So a person like that, how do you get through to a person like that? You've got to learn how to break that boundary. It's sensitive because you've got to understand where that comes from. You understand? So you've got to be sensitive to Abanjal. Understand how to penetrate that. Which is another story for another day. I will go on forever. All right. That brings us to the end of the question and answer session. Yeah. 
Puti, thank you so much. Thank you for coming through. Thank you for believing in tea yes. and for sharing your story. The platform is open, and uh, we wish you all the best with Tsoha uh, Africa. We hope that it goes just beyond a commitment in words. Yes. Because I don't know, maybe it's the platform is here, and or you just really feel it. Yeah. Um, but it goes beyond that, and you grow when you go international. So we oh. wish you all the best. Thank you so much, guys. Put you from. Uh,